Hello, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Welcome to our channel, Deep Dive Defense. Over here we take a deep look from unusual angles, which may challenge your mind. So let's dive right in. Today's topic is Iran's Pave Land Attack Cruise Missile, also known as the Quds Cruise Missile, the name given to it by Yemen's Ansarallah. This missile is a product of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC, Aerospace Forces Self-Sufficiency Jihad Organization. It is renowned for being the lowest cost cruise missile in its class worldwide. The Pave cruise missile first surfaced in the summer of 2019, when Yemen's Ansarallah made an astonishing claim of having launched a single land attack cruise missile towards an airport in the United Arab Emirates. Initially, this claim seemed implausible, but the wreckage found after the strike confirmed it. The US classified the missile as a Ya Ali variant, reflecting a previous IRGC Aerospace Force effort to develop a land attack cruise missile. Pava made a dramatic entrance during the September 2019 strike on Saudi Aramco's oil infrastructure. The discovery of wreckage from failed and crashed examples of this then unknown weapon surprised the world. The US named it Cruise Missile 351 and after capturing components en route to Yemen, marked with the number 351. Remarkably compact for a land attack cruise missile with a range of 1,350 kilometers in its initial variant, the Pave features a simple airframe design with fixed wings and an externally mounted mini turbojet engine. These features were necessary due to the missile's very low-cost propulsion system, a basic turbojet with a single-stage centrifugal compressor and single-stage centrifugal turbine, based on a Czech design that Iran replicated under the name Tolue 10. While the propulsion system was a key enabler, other significant factors included Iran's acquisition of the Soviet KH-55 long-range cruise missile and its extensive experience in producing and developing various C-802-based anti-ship cruise missiles. The Defense Ministry's Aerospace Organization has projects based on the KH-55, such as the Sumar and Hovize, which are not believed to have been adopted by the IRGC Aerospace Force due to their high cost and lower performance compared to ballistic missiles. However, KH-55 variants like the Abu Mahdi and Talaye were adopted by the Navy and IRGC Navy, aiding the IRGC Self-Sufficiency Jihad Organization in the Ya'ali project, aimed at creating a cost-efficient land attack cruise missile. While the Ya'ali project benefited from KH-55 technology, production experiences and solutions from the C-802 development, such as those from the Ghadir and Ghadir, were utilized to achieve the goal of a low-cost, long-range land attack cruise missile. In retrospect, acquiring a conventional warhead cruise missile based on the high-end, complex and expensive KH-55 nuclear-armed air-launched cruise missile was never a feasible option for the IRGC Aerospace Force. Thus, the Ya Ali project culminated in the final pave design, making the best use of the aforementioned enablers. To achieve a long range with such a simple turbojet engine, some sacrifices were made in the design such as limiting the warhead size to 100 to 200 kilograms and flying it up to 3 kilometers in altitude during cruise phases to conserve fuel. Subsonic land attack cruise missile usually fly at very low altitude to terrain mask their signature and make detection more difficult. In a fully low altitude flight pattern, the Pave would face a notably reduced range. The guidance system of the early variants relied solely on satellite navigation, either GLONASS or GPS. Despite these constraints, the Pave demonstrated impressive accuracy during its debut strike, completely evading Saudi Arabian air defenses. The ground and airborne sensors of the US and its regional allies also failed to warn Saudi Arabia of the rather large signature incoming attack of many drones and cruise missiles. Later variants, known in Yemen as the Quds 2 and Quds 3, extended the range to 1,650 kilometers and replaced the single satellite navigation antenna with a more jam-resistant CRPA receiver, similar to the one used on the Shahed-136 drone. This enhancement allows the missile to reject interference from jammers and point its receiving channel towards the true satellite navigation signal. Since these variants were introduced, several others have been developed, primarily for Yemen's Ansarallah. These newer versions include one with 2,000-kilometer range and various seeker options, such as radar and thermal imaging. Those new seekers are primarily for long-range anti-ship roles, but may also be used for TURCOM and DSMAC navigation techniques. 
In late 2023, Iran unveiled a significantly redesigned variant of the Pave, which appeared larger and more aerodynamic in shape, lacking the visible protruding CRPA satellite navigation antenna array. This version is likely the one the IRGC Aerospace Forces have adopted for their own use, likely featuring a more robust and jam-hardened guidance system like TURCOM. This advanced variant of the PAVE is equipped with two chin-mounted arrays or antennas for altimeter function or terrain-following radar to support a TURCOM-type guidance method. The larger size and the more advanced and heavier navigation system indicate that a new engine, such as the Tolu A-13, an improvement of the Tolu A-10, has been used for this missile. Despite its advanced features, this PAVE variant remains cost-efficient, for example avoiding the integration of its wings into the fuselage. However, it improves on the fixed wings of earlier versions by using foldable wings. This design allows for a potential new truck launcher system, capable of carrying four such PAVE variants, while retaining the ability to be concealed as a civilian truck. Besides this new variant, others have been observed, potentially aimed at creating an air-launched version. These variants have fully foldable wings and an engine nacelle mounted below the missile fuselage. The PAVE has its engine mounted unusually on the rear top side to reduce its radar signature against ground-based sensors. This new layout would make sense for an air-launched PAVE, possibly deployed by the IRGC Aerospace Forces Su-22, or even future large drones. During the Gaza War of 2023, Yemen's Ansarallah began targeting ships associated with Israel using anti-ship cruise missiles. Many of these attacks were carried out using PAVE, CODS variants hitting targets at considerable ranges and providing Ansarala with a military power projection capability typically reserved for major powers. Iraqi militias allied to Iran also launched sporadic single attack on Israel using PAVE cruise missiles. That type of attack, however, is rather intended in an attrition warfare strategy, forcing the opponent to keep its sensors and asset on alert. The continuous operation of the defenses puts stress on the systems and operators. In 2024, during Iran's Operation True Promise, approximately 30 PAVE variants were launched from Iran against Israel. To counter these cruise missiles and Shahed-136 one-way attack drones, Israel sought assistance from several allies, including the Americans, British and French, as well as help from the Jordanians, who protected their airspace from the incoming air-breathing threats. This combined effort of fighter jets and extensive region-wide jamming and spoofing of satellite navigation services likely meant that all 30 PAVE cruise missiles could be neutralized. However, the PAVE's speed, three times faster than the Shahed-136, did put additional pressure on enemy fighter jets to complete engagement cycles quickly. In many cases, it required the use of high-end air-to-air missiles like the US AIM-120 AMRAAM, which are significantly more expensive than the PAVE. The interceptions also indicated that either satellite navigation system spoofing was not deemed sufficiently effective to defeat the CRPA receivers used on the drones and cruise missiles, or the risk of robust navigation systems like TURCOM being used appeared serious. The PAVE cruise missile costs between $50,000 to $100,000 each, while the air-to-air -air missiles used to intercept it can cost between $500,000 to $1 million each not accounting for the operation costs of a large number of supersonic fighter jets. For Iran's ballistic missile-centric IRGC Aerospace Force, cruise missiles were traditionally a less attractive option due to their lower chances for penetration of defenses compared to ballistic missiles. However, the PAVA's confirmed service entry into the Aerospace Force indicates Iran's intention to create a diverse threat portfolio, forcing adversaries to develop and commit specific countermeasures. For the Aerospace Force, the PAVA's low launch signature and long-range performance allow it to attack from various vectors, exploiting regions with weaker enemy defenses. Against a very compact and well-defended country like Israel, it might be difficult to find a weak spot to slip through. But that's not the case for large countries. In summary, the PAVA's low-cost design makes it a valuable addition to the Aerospace Force's weapon mix. And while it's not the ideal choice in terms of survivability in the initial phases of a high-intensity conflict, it has earned itself a firm place in its specific role. So that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video and like our work, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. We will try our best to answer your comments. Your support would be greatly appreciated and motivates to produce more content in the future. Thank you. 
and have a great day.